I'm Denise. I'm Katie. I've been friends with Katie for over 20 years. I cannot believe it's been 20 years. This is 88 Chat. Where we talk about a really random program. Advisory, disclaimer, this is just our opinion. Please don't take it as fact. Don't send hate to anybody. We want to love everybody. Hi, hello people, welcome back. Today we are talking about our furry friends, our fur babies, and that is our animals. The Oregonian newspaper is asking people if they have had trouble getting access to vet appointments recently. We are not associated with the Oregonian in any way, but it just so happens that we have something to say about that. So a couple of weeks ago, I kind of experienced something with my, my dog. He was sick. During this pandemic, there isn't that many places that are open 24 hours for serious things. And usually the wait time is hours. There's only one that I know of, and that's Dub Lewis. Thank you, Dub Lewis, for helping us out. I wish there would be, would be more beds. I wish there was more places that are open. I have had a similar experience and ended up going to the exact same pet hospital. Because it was the only thing open at that time of night that was remotely close, it wasn't even in the same city. I had to go from a, an adjacent city all the way across town. Thanks again, Dove Lewis. I love our dog. I sure you love your dog too. And it'd be nice if we had more pet hospital. There needs to be more places to have emergencies, especially because sometimes these things happen at night. And to have only one, basically, that is 24-7, doesn't have a cap, is really frustrating. We don't have that many emergency hospitals. If our pets get hurt, we want to make sure they're okay. We had one emergency place, used to be 24-7, now turned into a 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and it's only to captivity. And then other places are exact same way. I think it's because there is a shortage of vets. There's so many people who have pets and so many of them can't get, get them in on the day that they are sick. They have to wait at least a couple hours or days. So when I first got my dog, we automatically went and got pet insurance for him. But it was still costly just because like my plan covers 80%. But at least it helps a little bit. The bill was $880 because we went to the VCA first before we went to Dove Lewis. Shout out to VCA. You're awesome. We love our furry friends, like family. And at the same time, it's also very costly. Some people have pet insurance, but you have to pay up front first. And so therefore we get reimbursed for it, which is annoying because some of us don't have that money. It's like when you go to a hospital for us, you don't pay now. You give us a bill later and then we can bill it to the insurance and then after the insurance is taken care of then you send us a bill of what we what we owe i think that what should be done just because i think that works better that way the the clinics get paid and then eventually we'll pay pay what is needed my assumption would be that they make you pay up front because a lot of people just don't bother to get pet insurance and not everybody has the luxury of having enough money for those kinds of things and so if you send them the bill they just won't pay it vets have to assume that they're not going to get paid but having had conversations about you know universal health care wouldn't wouldn't it be nice if we could have something like that for our pets too i know that's highly unlikely but wouldn't that be nice i think one of the things that hinders us is, is if our government took care of our health care that leaves money for us to spend. Spend to our pets and take care of those bills. Now, unfortunately, we are not in that type of situation. For those of you who may be tuning in for the first time, if you are interested in hearing more about our opinions of universal health care, we do already have a podcast out on that topic, so please feel free to check it out on our channel. But yeah, like we said, it's... It's frustrating. I wish we had more hospitals. I hopefully in the future, maybe that would happen. But for right now, it's like, it's tiring. It's annoying. 
but we can only do what we can for our pets. And on a side note, there are also services that people get in place of insurance, like Banfield plans. Another one is called Hannah. They have these plans that you pay monthly that are supposed to be equivalent to pet insurance, but just for their location. But if you're someone who is thinking this is cheaper and I'm getting better value because they're going to handle everything for me. And then it turns out you suddenly need to go someplace like Dove Lewis, but your only insurance is the Banfield plan. Then that's not going to help you when you need to go somewhere else. Personally, I did have my dog on a Banfield plan, but when he had a medical emergency in the middle of the night, we ended up having to go to Dove Lewis. Because we had a Banfield plan, that meant that we were not covered to go to Dove Lewis. And because you have to pay up front, that meant that I was calling my mom in the middle of the night, begging her, can you please put money in my account so that I can save the dog? And I'm sure that many people have had that experience. So I just wanted to put in that context for why I would highly recommend getting traditional, regular pet insurance over these convenience plans because they're not that convenient when you're in an emergency. I think that's the place to end. Are you in Oregon or Southwest Washington and have the same experience? If you would like to contact the Oregonian, there will be a link in the description below. Thanks for watching this episode of 88 Chat. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Now, bark! Now!